Hi guys, we're we're so I don't we've set up a new like um automated thing and I don't know if everybody got the email. So we just sent an emer I just sent an emergency email out in like about 30 seconds. So I hope that worked out. So anyway, well, at least we've got some people here. <laughs> I hope people didn't take the 15 minutes to kick off seriously. <laughs> My yeah, people I, looking in in 10 minutes. I broke, I broke a sweat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Just give us a quick shout out where you are. Our energy is here. People, okay, everyone's coming now. We've got people coming in. Okay, London, Beit Shemesh, Ottawa, Detroit, all working. Great. Oh, <laughs> wow, this is so. Bob, hi, Bob. Nice to see you again. And Anuj is in now. Okay, so look, we're going to kick off now. Oh, wow, well, I need to get my breath back from that. Why well, don't you wait just a minute or so, because you've still got quite a lot of people looking in and catch your breath. Oh, Mum and Dad are here. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Hi, Patricia from the Philippines. That's maybe the, the first time from the Philippines. Nice. How's the weather over there, Patricia? You don't imagine the Philippines would like ever be anything other than like boiling hot and very. No, sad. they get really bad rain. Oh yeah, they get they get they get the rains. Rain like you've never seen. <laughs> that reminds me of a funny India story that I'm not going to get into right now. Okay, okay, let let's begin because we've got a, we've got a slightly um a slightly more um we, we're trying to do this in an hour this week. Hi, Hava. Okay. Hi, Dennis. Okay, this is great. So. Firstly, welcome everyone again to our fourth, uh, our fourth Get It Straight, um, not Get It Straight, our fourth Take It Up A Notch webinar. Okay, they've been really, uh, really successful until now. Everybody's really enjoyed themselves and we're also enjoying ourselves, so we kept going. I wanted to welcome Anuj, Anuj Singh, who is, uh, we brought him in as our kind of business um, advisor. Um, he lives in India, a very place that close to my heart. I'm going to actually just quickly put up a um, a link here. If anybody's interested in hearing about my India story and my whole, like, whatever, one second. How do you do this? You've just undersold a really good story, Shmuel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if anybody's interested in my whole, like, story, uh, which some people have found quite interesting. I, it's online. You can click. It's up there, YouTube. Uh, so that's my connection to India. But Anuj has uh, has come in as kind of a business director. And thanks to him, we are we are rekindling our 60% off again for 24 hours. Uh, Joe will post that in a second. Um, Shmuel, is that of every course? Or every course. The... Absolutely every course. I'm just going to quickly, one sec, I'm just going to put that up very quickly. Oh, great. It's not there. That's really helpful. Okay, Joe, you're going to, or Josh, could you deal with that? So that, because it didn't come up on the. Uh, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the right one, though, for 60% off. Didn't I'll, look, it, I'll check. It says 60 okay. off. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to post it in the chat now. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, we also just wanted to let everybody know we're also toying with the idea of doing this once a week for an hour. Has anybody got any thoughts on that? If you would like to, um, if you if you think that's a good idea, or uh, if you'd rather us keep it to, to once every two weeks. Um, otherwise, let's jump in. I just want a quick a quick thank you to Sarah Bass, Talia Krishna, Rivka Mosbacher, uh, Rivka got Miriam Goldstein. Malkula Federman, Yudit Chatskovsky, and Yisrael Sugarman for sending people to us. I'm sure there's a lot of other people as well who did that, but I just wanted to give you a thanks out because who you sent said that you sent us. Um, our our program for today is we're going to have half an hour of editing as usual. Then we're going to have a, uh, we're introducing Shira Kornblitz, who I think she's definitely in my top five, maybe my favorite student of all time. Um, and she's doing amazing things. So you can check her work out. If you're interested in Shira Cornblit photography, um, Joe will send you a link for that. Um, otherwise, she, so we're going to have an interview with her for, for 10 minutes or so. And then uh, a lot of people have asked me about my photography. So what I've actually done, and I'm going to send this out right now, is I'm going to send this file to everybody. Has everybody got on that file? And I want to put out a poll. 
which is this poll. If everybody, you don't need to do this right now. Oh, actually, you might as well. Uh, but that file that I've put out has given you, can everyone see that file? Joe, do you see that file? Did that work? Oh, it worked. Someone said it worked. Okay. Mm. Can I invite photo club members to join your webinar? Absolutely, San Mate. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. So if everybody, I've basically gone through my favorite pictures. And um, if you could just sign the, um, just, just click the poll. And I'm, because we're not going to get to all of them. So I just, I'm going to keep the poll live for another, say, another 15 seconds, 20, say it's another 20 seconds, and I'm going to take a quick, Joe, if you could just take a note out of the order of which I should go at, because like I said, we're not going to get to all of those pictures, um, but at least we'll get to the ones that people want us to get to. Okay, Joe, you got that? Say that again, Shmuel. Devorah joined the room. How did Devorah join the room? <laughs> did you just let Devorah in the room? I don't think she should be here. Sorry, Devorah, we're going to get you out of here. Um, Joe, just take a note of these numbers because I said we're not going to get to all of these pictures, but we'll go according to what people want to see. So we'll keep it for another five yeah. seconds. Five. Keep it just a bit longer because I just need to. Oh, okay. See. So Joe's going to write. Yeah, you, you go, and I'll just have a look at the poll. I'll okay. end the poll. You go. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's jump in. Without further ado, I also wanted to just as we jump in now. Um, uh, just before we jump in, one more quick thing. I just pulled out from this week three of our transformations. We have multiple transformations each week. Can everyone see my Picasso? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'll start again. So this is Gitty Hall. She came to us a, a few weeks ago. I'm just going to quickly go through. This is what she came at. This is what she was doing at the beginning. And this was after a couple of weeks of instruction in the masterclass. And she's progressed to this after literally a few weeks, which I think is just fantastic. This is flash photography. Absolutely fantastic. I want to give also a big heads up to Rifka as well. Rifka Mosbacher, if that's how you pronounce the name. Um, this is how she began when she started the course a few weeks ago. Okay. If you don't mind me saying, that was really, really bad. And this is what she came to literally wow. in about six weeks. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, this, Shmuel, is, this is after they've started your masterclass, yeah? Just the masterclass, yeah. This is just the masterclass. These are, they weren't in order. But um, just the difference, isn't that amazing? From this, 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 and this, to this, 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 this. Amazing. And one last thing is your Herbert Hollander as well. As well, another one of our transformations this week who came from taking pictures like this, and this, and this, and this, to pictures like this. And oh, this, and this, amazing. Sure. These girls just had, a, they just enjoyed photography before the course. They didn't yeah. they weren't charging yeah. anyone for anything. They just enjoyed taking photos. And a lot of them didn't even, yeah, people literally come from zero to pro, really, literally within a few weeks. It's amazing. Um, okay, so let's jump into our, so what I wanted to do also is I've got a lot of, um, okay, guys, sorry about that. Please forgive me. Um, uh, what I said is I've been getting a lot of calls from people, or a lot of emails telling me how they're feeling like um, the word is Halisha Sadas, which means when you look at a photographer who's much better than you, and you just, you know what I'm talking about, you feel like, oh, like that feeling. Someone said the word disenchanted, which is quite a good word. Disenchanted, that's great. That's great. Okay. Um, the, 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 the thing is that when we look at a photographer who's, work, who's better than us and feel rubbish, it's actually the exact same thing as looking at a photographer who's worse than us and feeling good. So our work here, I want us to just to, to not be thinking about ourselves and then looking at the pictures objectively and not to be constantly comparing and contrasting and measuring against ourselves. And this turns into a kind of spiritual exercise in a sense. OK, so jumping in, I said here before that the the um, the problem here is that we haven't got a decent separation between the subject and background, okay? So um, this area is confusing the situation. Otherwise, we've got a lovely energy in this direction. She's beautifully cropped in, loads of energy. That pose is really like dynamic, lots of like energy, lots of energy moving in this direction. And we've got space over here, so that's fantastic. But like I said, just this little area here really does damage the picture, the fact that, the, the fact that our subject isn't popping out from the background in such a profound way. Joe, are you there? Yeah, I was going to say, is there a way of editing? Go, 
get that because it's yeah. so cool just to is there anything you would do editing around her head to try and make it you could a little you okay. could you could do something but i'm not going to get into that you could do something okay. um, what i want to do what i mentioned here though is this i felt was great because rachel here broke away oh, so this is the royal she broke away from our regular rule of zooming in to take this picture and it's become kind of like a comical picture so i took it into lightroom um, what I want to show you here is when you've got, it's not comical, it's like, it's got, because she's zoomed out, there comes like a, um, a kind of, um, um, like barrel distortion. So it really brings us in, it becomes very kind of energized. So what I wanted to do here is just pull it all the way. When a picture is energized, but let me just show you back, but the color palette is kind of moot or flat then you're distracting, you're damaging the energy of the picture by keeping it in color. That's a very good rule for when you turn to black and white. So when you've got an energized subject, but the coloring is kind of subdued, it's a very good idea to turn to black and white to really pull out the energy. So we're gonna go black and white. I'm gonna add the contrast, I'm just gonna do this quickly, add the contrast, open up the shadows a little bit and bang in some, some clarity. And now I'm gonna finish off with quite a powerful vignette. And that is the kind of crop, I might crop in a little closer actually, that is the kind of crop I would go for, that is the kind of edit that I would go for for a picture like this, that like I said, breaks away from the regular rules of zooming in close and, uh, and, and, and wide aperture and all the different things that we generally do for portrait photography. Okay, this is gorgeous, well done Ayala, she's another one of our uh, super transformations. This is beautiful, we've got actually a huge amount of shape to this, is the actual pose itself is comprised of a bunch of shapes, maybe an oval shape like that as well. Then we've got these lines coming in as well. So it's a real dynamic energy, but because it's a soft, it's a very soft uh, expression and the background is beautifully blurred out, stats are, are basically perfect. I think you're lucky, even at 200th of a second, you're, it's basically perfect, but to be a 200 ISO at a 400th of a second might be a little bit of a better idea. Um, but the, there's an energy, there's like a, there's a very, it's like an, an aggressive, passive feel in this picture. The, 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 the structure is very aggressive, very dynamic, but the qualities and the expression are very passive. So it has a very engaging feel. It's like eating like something, you know, like eating a kind of a chocolatey thing that has like something tangy and something like very smooth at the same time. Do you get what I'm saying? Joe, do you understand what I said a little bit? yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about you eat those kinds of things okay um <laughs> so <laughs> this is cute um the problem here is that we're we're missing someone over here um it would be nice if we could just bring in like another random child maybe from somewhere but failing that if we moved him over here um that would probably create a slightly more um symmetrical um um triangle that I think would add to this picture but otherwise well done well done nice that's uh, one of the big rules of photography of, of portrait photography is creating um, beautiful shapes within the uh, within the families that's good okay this is a nice edit unfortunately the expression of her on her face is not is not very engaging but the edit has been done very well so well done there okay got a nice strong triangle okay and energy moving into space over this side which works okay now, this is a great example of a picture where I would be moving this way. The issue here is that this amazing, this amazing vanishing point, this amazing uh, graphic over here is actually being compromised by our subjects. So if you moved over this way, then our subjects, if you could imagine, would kind of come over here and then we would have this area by itself and our subjects by themselves and then they wouldn't be distracting one from the other. Okay, this is great. There's really, you could, it's re it would be really difficult to do this, but just to explain um, theoretically that if this kid was over here and not, not, um, um, not overlapping with this kid over here, that would add for a lot of energy. It's a big, big principle in photography in general. The isolation of the subjects makes a very big difference. But that's a beautiful shot. So well done, Devorah. Well done. Okay, this is awesome. Sharon, wow. really great shot. I'll tell you what, what would make this picture just go wow, even though it is pretty wow, would be a massive flash coming over this way, okay, and lighting up her face. Because as it is, 
Um, this it would just be so good if we could see her face really well. Um, if you had shot this in RAW, it would allow a little bit more leeway to um, to bring out some more uh, to bring out some more um, uh, detail. Uh, but as it is, like I said, it's very beautiful. We've got a great the shutter speed at a two thousandth of a second has frozen this water pin sharp, which is great. Uh, but adding a huge flash would be really special. Obviously, it's not very practical, but just to, just theoretically. Okay, Nahama, this is really, really well done. I've seen this picture before, Nahama. This is absolutely beautiful. The key to silhouettes is an interesting shape. Okay, and this is definitely an interesting shape. I think it's basically an absolute rule that when you're taking a silhouette of somebody, you always need to be able to see their profile. Never take a silhouette of someone where they're looking straight onto the camera at you. It's a, it's a disaster. Joe, just making your... Are you still there? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just... <laughs> okay, but this is really very, very special. It's a very special picture. We've got this lovely strong triangle here as well, not to forget these beautiful leaves up here. And the fact that I don't know if you did this in post, but you've you've managed to secure a completely white area around our subject, which is just really special makes our, our subject really like contrast that to this picture here where she's blending in when we look at this picture over here um like i said i don't know if you did this on purpose but the fact that there aren't even any leaves coming around her is just just adds so much to the 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 popping factor of of her of her shape it's amazing okay um this is fine this is great um the light coming in from behind is lovely this over here is slightly distracting but i do appreciate that you've left space in this direction which is nice we've got energy moving over that way so that works really well good stuff okay stats um could be improved upon a little bit but not not bad okay um i think this is lovely well done Hava. this looks like you had some kind of um some kind of commercial job here um very well done adding these these uh, lines in the foreground as a huge amount of energy um and vibrance to the picture plus it gives a lovely depth and you've been very very um precise to make sure that you haven't compromised our subject at all with these uh, with these graphical elements here which really works very well otherwise the um the 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 um the composition works very nice as well this triangle over here and then that kind of links in with these lines over here which also works structurally so that's well done good stuff okay that's gorgeous who did that Yecheved. well done Yecheved. that's really special um f2 is a little bit dangerous for this picture and you have been stung by that i would be taking this picture at something like f 3.5 to make sure that both eyes are perfectly in focus um but the actual the light is gorgeous um, the balance is gorgeous. The color palette is just absolutely very, very special. It's a really special picture. Just I think it would be improved if we had up the aperture so that we'd make sure that both eyes are in focus. Very important when we're taking a very close up of a face, you don't have, you've hardly got anything to uh, gain by using a very wide aperture. Um, as in, you don't want to be using a narrow aperture, but going up to 3.5 f4 base very rarely makes much of a difference because you're in so close so the depth of field is very slim anyway okay um hi bella i think for me the background is a little bit overdone it looks like you've done this in post and one of the issues which is a big a, a big point here is that you've compromised the the um the edge of the of the subjects again like i said the, the separation between background and subject is so important. I can't stress it. I can't stress it enough. So even though the actual composition is beautiful and the color palette is beautiful and the pose is beautiful and it's very cute and it's also lovely and everything, but it's lost a little bit graphically because we don't have a, a very a very strong separation between subject and background, especially in the little girl in the middle who's really the key to the whole picture. But otherwise, the other, other than that, it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. And the stats are perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Um, so here, this has been shot at a 50th of a second. Okay. And the person's gotten away with it. Who is this? Sharon Pruer. You got away with it, but basically very dangerous to be doing that. Um, I would like to see this little girl in the background come out a little bit more. OK, and then otherwise we've got a nice energy moving off into the background. We could really turn this into a uh, into a beautiful, um, 
kind of full picture. Maybe we'll go back to this in a minute and see. Um, I'm not sure if the colouring here is to do with my my computer or the, it's to do with your the print. I'm not sure, but the colouring either way, the way I'm seeing it is not particularly nice. Um, this light coming from the side here. Anybody got any thoughts on that? Do we like it? Do we hate it? Or do we not care about it? Any thoughts? I have to wait a second for the to, to catch up with everybody. Yeah, definitely should. We need a group for people. Oh, other stuff. <laughs> Everyone's just talking about other stuff. <laughs> I just happen to be here talking as well. Like it, not bad. Don't like. Okay, not the greatest. Don't like. Love it. It's good. So I'll tell you what I'm thinking is that it's not a disaster. It doesn't destroy the picture. And I think you could argue that maybe it does add something to it. Definitely the coloring is weird. Um, but this kind of light on the side that isn't overly aggressive, um, it usually doesn't destroy a picture. And in some cases, it can enhance, add a little bit of energy. What I do like here is this lovely strong triangle here. And then we've got it enclosed by the shape over here. This is well done. Um, this is well done, the, the energy moving along here. So good stuff, Shif, Shifi. Okay, um, Adina, hi. This is, um, so this is really beautiful. The stats are very good, okay. Um, you've managed to get, it still is pin sharp, which at 160 of a second is, is well done. Um, I'm wondering if, it's not an obvious thing to say, but I'd like to see it with him actually encased in. Obviously, we've got lovely energy moving in that direction. We've got a gorgeous color palette, lovely textures, uh, nothing distracting whatsoever. And I think it really goes with his look and the light splashing on his face as well is quite, uh, is quite nice and clean. So well done. Okay, now this is a great example of where too much backlight has caused a bit of an issue. Okay, number one, we know that the rule of backgrounds is um, is comparable exposure, and if we can, a different color. So unfortunately here, we've got this big overexposed white area, which is a big no-no. So we'll crop that off, I think, immediately. And cropping in close, as we know, gives us intimacy and intensity. We've got these lovely energies moving in over here. Okay, this light here, it would be better, in my opinion, if if we were outside of the light. You know what the truth is? Now that I'm saying that, now that we've cropped this big white area in, I'm not so sure. If you'd shot this in RAW and brought down the highlights a little bit, I think that would have worked nicely. Uh, but otherwise, we've got a lovely, uh, lovely energy coming in this way and this way. Gorgeous little girl that we're really, like, fix, fixed on, which is great. And then we've got this lovely kind of line around here that keeps that eye very interested and then gorgeous colors around so um who who did this tally so i'll give you a big heads up actually i was originally thinking that the light was a little bit too strong coming from the back but like i said once we've cropped out that white area i think it really comes together so well done well done this is beautiful who did this yehuda well done yehuda okay I'm, i don't know where this light is coming from if it is it looks like it's actually the natural light here okay stats are fantastic i don't know if you were if you could have been at a wider aperture. Um, but the short light that's coming in here is absolutely beautiful. Joe, are you still with me? Yeah, still with you. <laughs> sure. Still, still feeling what I did before. Um, okay, so this, this is lovely. Lovely energy moving towards the, the Hanukkahs. Um, and then we've got the Hanukkahs creating their own kind of picture. So we've got really, it's like two parts of the, uh, two elements of the picture, which is really what I was talking about over here this idea of we've got the two elements of the picture contradicting each other. Whereas over here, we've got the two elements of the picture not contradicting each other. Um, what's the word, Joe? Adding to each other, complementing each other. Complementing each other. So we're going from here to here to here to here to here. And they don't distract from each other. When we're looking at her, we're looking at her. When we're looking over here, we're looking over here. And they don't distract from one another. Okay, Joe, we, how are we doing for time? Yeah, I was just about to say, do you want to start your um, interview with yeah. Michelle? Yeah, let's do that. I just let's just look at a few more pictures. Gorgeous, absolutely special. It could be a little bit more, um, a little bit more centered, but also beautiful. Well done. This um, this could be. Uh, it's a little bit overexposed on the faces. Okay, um, this shape is a little bit random, and this line here is very distracting. Okay, and the the light from the background is a little strong. 
Okay, here, this is a great example of where you need flash and get away from the background. Okay, get away from this distracting background. Not very nice. Okay, and a great example of, um, of lack of subject. Although the quality and the colors of this picture graphically are very beautiful. This is the kind of picture that a photographer could fall in love with and a client would not even look at for a second. It doesn't have any um, any emotional value. It has a lot of lovely um, graphical value. Uh, but that doesn't sell pictures. It's very important that we need to get a balance between emotions, uh, graphics and emotions. And emotions always outdo the graphics, always. OK, and Yecheved, well done. Oh, this is so Yecheved. Anyway, this is beautiful. One issue here is that these lines are coming over her face, which is uh, which compromises our subject a little bit. But the light here in the background is gorgeous. But very, very important that we don't have anything ever uh, overlapping the face. OK, Joe, should we bring in Shira? Yeah, absolutely. You want to come in? How do we bring her in? Um, I think she has to. Shira, do you want to? Uh, how do you do this? Like speak? I think you have to click speak. Are you there, Shira? One second. Shira? Shira? Where is she? She move on to the next thing. Oh, she... okay, I can see her. Accept. She should be in. Oh yeah, how do you accept? At the bottom, it says request pending, so I just accepted her. Okay. I didn't see that though. Interesting. Just as a quick heads up, by the way, like I said, we are running. Oh, here she is. We are running a 60% off again for 24 hours like we've done in the past. Can everybody just give a heads up, please, in the chat of how much of a no-brainer that is to join the Zero to Pro Masterclass um, for 60%? Oh, you're going to be flooded with responses now. Just because anybody who's here who's not in the Masterclass, with I know it sounds like very arrogant or whatever, but I really don't mean it in like an arrogant way. But the, the results of the Masterclass just so speak for themselves. And like we saw, it's just it's just it's it's uh, it's really amazing what people are doing. So please, uh, please join in. No brainer. See, totally amazing. These are people. This is no one's no one's been paid to tell you this, uh, but it really is an amazing opportunity for 60 percent off. It's insane. What's up with Shira? Oh, I got totally disconnected. OK, Shira, jump in now. Are you there? How much is it now, Miriam? It's four. It's sixty percent off, Miriam. Sixty percent off, which comes out to about four hundred dollars, just under four hundred dollars. Of all courses, yeah. Is Shira there? She oh. should be. I wonder when you used the panic button. <laughs> I would have used it earlier if I could have done. That would have been fantastic. Apparently, they send around a whole group of people to your house. They bring their like wet flannels and stuff, and they've got towels and things, and they really like they really take care of you. you know? <laughs> I did hover over it before, but I thought, no, I have faith in Shmuel. He's going to come back. <laughs> Just a few minutes, guys. Uh, yeah. Just hold on. Um, I don't know where Shira is. Oh, so you know what? I don't know what happened to Shira, um, but I'm going to I'm going to go on with maybe the next part. Oh. Every time I'm asked to speak, I get disconnected. Oh, that's not very good. Okay, so you know what? I think we're going to... Maybe, you know what I'm going to do? Maybe I'm just going to show a couple of Shira's pictures um, and just tell you what I think about how fantastic she is. One second. Um, and here we go. I just pulled off a few pictures from her website. Shmuel, you should just give a tiny bit of background about her kind of... Oh, so, so Shira joined out. She, that's a good idea, Joe. Shira um, joined um, our school when it was a physical school um, about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Shira, what's the, how long? I don't know. Um, but what really, what I, one of the reasons I wanted to highlight her is that I felt, I feel that the, the physical school, although it was very good and the results were very good, um, it really didn't compare to the online learning. It really didn't. The, the online learning, the actual classes are so much more put together 
and the and the amount of time that I can give to each student is so much more. That I just wanted to show you what Shira did being in the on on the on the physical in the physical school, and then to just just to give a heads up about what's going on in the on the online world. So anyway, just to show you a few of these pictures, just she's got such a fantastic sensitivity to um, perspective to to composition um, and to the coloring as well. Her posing is fantastic. Her her um, her um, sensitivity to the light in all these pictures over and over. It's just she's just a put together photographer in thinking in such a clear way. All the pictures that there's never a, an an inch extra or a millimeter of extra space in the picture. She's also getting great energies with the pit with the with the clients as well. Got great. We've always got great posing. Never anything other other than great posing. Okay, using a using. Um, the, the the equipment that I've recommended and also having become very pre prevalent uh not prevalent what's the word having coming having become very um proficient using flash as well that gives her amazing an amazing um like versatility to to um to be able to shoot in every in every place as well that's really the beauty of flash again energy is always moving in with lovely lovely um Lovely shapes always moving around again, beautifully cropped in, a beautiful selection of background. The light is perfect as well. Look at the energy there, fantastic. Stats are great. Um, I think she's using a lens that's F4, so she went up to a thousand ISO, a thousandth of a second. Awesome energy in this picture. Well done, Shira. This is gorgeous. And again, just just showing you the 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 beautiful um, sensitivity to the light. Um, to the background, to the posing, having everyone looking at even different angles, different directions, adds so much energy, so much like um, so much dynamic feel to the picture. It's fantastic. Um, and again, a beautiful sensitivity to the light. Look how soft and gorgeous that light is. Um, beautiful composition again. Okay, and then again, a lovely. Not only not only. Com uh, uh, very proficient in understanding and tasting the light but she's created this this kind of cheeky feel and she's got an energy moving in this direction that creates a dynamic feel because it's edgy moving not into space which always we know ends uh leaves us with a very dynamic feel bringing all of this uh all of this um foliage in in the foreground creates a lovely depth and just overall it's just a gorgeous just just sheer i'm just so impressed by what you're doing everyone should go and check out her website She's a she's a fantastic photographer and a credit to uh, a credit to our course and a big thumbs up, Shira. Okay, that said, so Joe, what's the what's the breakdown of what the pictures that we're looking at? Do you, what, what yeah, you so we've got the leader is number eight, twenty five percent. Okay, so I'm going to go to eight first. I don't even know what that is. What's number eight? Ooh, okay, so what I've done is let's just sort by name. Now I'm going to show you. This is the picture. This is the final picture. Now, what I've done is I've gone through all of um, I've gone through my pictures and I just found that what I thought of 10 of my favorite pictures, mainly wedding pictures, because there there's much more to do in wedding in wedding photography than in um, in portrait photography. So this was the original picture. This is the so this is the final edited picture. OK, let's just discuss this very quickly. Um, I haven't got the stats here. But I've got the stats on the non edited one. So it's one point eight. 320 at 400 ISO. So at 1.8, you might say, but Shmuel, you just said that when we've got two eyes in the picture, you should be at a wider aperture. But if you actually think about it, this picture is only about this eye. That eye is just is just a background. Okay, this is a picture of this eye. Now, um, the actual beauty of this image, in my opinion, is that she's actually looking past the camera. She's not looking into the camera and you like think, oh wow, so she's just like not looking. And then you're like, oh wow, look, she's looking straight at us. And it's this combination of, so we've got this, we've got this beautiful, um, um, what's the word, the subject is very engaging. It's just, it's kind of mystical. And it's echoed by the color palette again. You'll see in all these pictures, it's a absolute coming together of um, of graphics and of subject. Always, there's no such thing as a, a fantastic picture that doesn't have both in in an awesome in an awesome way. So now just to show you how I got this picture, this was the final edited picture, and this was the original picture. This is how the picture came out of the camera, and this is what I did. So I obviously did the skin soft, and I brightened the eyes. Um, I made it a little bit brighter, et cetera. Nothing crazy and added a vignette. But look what I had to do to get this picture. So I've I've brought in I brought in the picture just before I started this series. 
and then I put the one at the end. So let's just have a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it took 13 pictures. Again, there was another one that I edited over here as well. But just to look at what I was doing, so I wasn't absolutely sure what was going on. I got her to look in a few different directions. I got her to look at the camera. I got to look away from the camera, different smiles. That was a mid-smile, mid whatever it is. And then that was the actual picture that we nailed. That was the one that we actually nailed. And you can see that I actually prefer this image to this image with her looking straight into the camera. Okay, Joe, what's the next picture? Number one with 20%. So they were two clear majorities. Oh, okay. So let me just order these again by name. Okay. So this is the final picture, which is one of my, like, you know, one of my iconic oh, pictures. Oh, yeah, that's, that's an iconic pictures. Schmall Diamond photo. Yeah, exactly. But look how it came out of camera. That was the original. That's what we made it. That's what it became, but that's what it was. Okay. So very important here, everybody, look at this. See all these little spots in front of our subject. Do you know how much that reduces the picture? So we removed them as much as we could. Yeah, to the best of our ability, which was fine. Another thing is the chromatic aberration is insane. Okay, chromatic aberration is created when you're using a wide ang uh, a wide aperture and there's a big um, disparity between the shadow and the highlight. And between the dark and the bright comes this kind of um, purple fringing. It's amazing. Sure, I just asked how you add the spots. I'm sure you were going to go into it, but... So I didn't actually add spots at all. These spots are here. All I did was I added a lot of clarity. I painted around there with a lot of clarity and that brought out all the spots, um, but they're actually there. I didn't actually add any spots. I didn't actually add any spots, but I cropped them very tight. This is, um, this is an umbrella, one of my umbrellas. I've got a flash in the background, uh, no flash in the foreground. Um, did you shoot this raw, this one? Nope, nope, no. nope. Didn't shoot, so I didn't shoot the other one raw as well. Good question. Um, there's very few pictures that I shoot raw. Now, just to show you what I did to get this picture. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. They get the hint. <laughs> 28, 29, 30, 31. 30 pictures. Now, again, I just, I, with my, all my students, I talk to them about engineering the odds. Now, it doesn't matter. You can delete them all and you pull that picture out. It was all worth it. All worth it. Okay, Joe, what's next? Uh, number two. Number two. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures of all time. This really is. And this is one of the few pictures that I did shoot in RAW. Okay, like, although I do tell people to not shoot in RAW, um, I also say that you shouldn't be scared and you, you should know when to shoot in RAW. Okay, um, so this is the final. Okay, and believe it or not, that is the original. Okay, but that's actually a RAW picture. So you can see it's very under very underexposed because uh, I knew that I was going to bring back a lot of detail in post. Um, but when we actually discuss this image, we've got a massive flash indoors. Okay, this is a wedding we shot in Chicago at the beginning of the year before uh, before COVID. Um, I've got my assistant. I don't think you can see him. One of my best friends. Is that the hall or the house? <laughs> this is their house. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful most gorgeous house you've ever seen. But um, wow. inside over here is, is my friend Gershom, who's got a massive flash. And he's powered up the whole, I mean, look at the, look at that. To get that lit, we needed a huge amount of flash. Um, and then we came out and using raw, we were able to bring back a lot of, uh, a lot of energy. This wouldn't have been possible in JPEG. This picture wouldn't have been possible in JPEG. Um, but I just, I saw the lines and I saw the, like, we've got this huge kind of um, unspoken of triangle going up. Then we've got, we've got all of the hard texture of the image uh, of the of the of the brickwork of the house, then we've got the exact opposite texture of the sky with the clouds, um, and we've got this. We've got a strong depth sense of depth, which creates these strong triangles. We've got an interesting subject, okay, the girl inside, and put it all together. So we've got a we've got awesome awesome graphics, and um, and we've got um, we've got. Um, a interesting, so it's not an amazing subject, but I got her to do like a funky thing. So that makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, but this is really like when the graphics are just out of control and it does hold the picture. But if she wasn't there and it was just a picture of a house, it would still be relatively uh, relatively useless anyway. Um, Joe, what's next? 
number six. Number six. Okay, again, this is another one of my favourite pictures. Shmuel, um, yeah. Josh said that um, she is actually here in as Rivka. So if you did want to bring her in just to say hi, she is here ready to ready to go. Okay, so let, let me just discuss this, and then we'll talk to, to talk to Shira for a minute. Um, so this is this is a picture that I took in the Waldorf Astoria in Jerusalem. Um, now this stairwell, as I found out later, was actually designed to be looked at from above. OK, so this was the original. Look at that compared to this. Not only did we bring up the contrast and all the uh, all the clarity and the and the um, we brightened it and stuff and we got rid of like the little flash in the background, um, but we also actually structurally made it a bit more perfect. You see how this picture is a little bit like kind of wonky to the side. And then we actually uh, we actually fixed it up. So the energy here, there's the truth is this picture, in my opinion, has got a lot in common with the energy of this picture. When you look at it, although they look nothing like each other, look at the energies here. We've got this huge amount of triangles bringing us all the way in a huge depth perspective. Then we've got these these lines coming around. It's just completely cashed in on the architect's um, beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful imagination. And then we've got our bride in the bottom that basically just gives us context. If it wasn't for that little bit of the bride, again, the picture would be useless. It'd just be, you know, who wants a picture of this? Um, but with the flash in the background, again, we we go further with the um, with the um, with the triangles and um, and just push the energy of the picture further and further. Like I, I say in the class, always um, the two the two um, foundations of editing are emphasizing the subject and going further, okay? Going further means determine or decipher or feel what kind of energy is there in the picture. It can usually go in two ways, dynamic or passive. If it's dynamic, go further and make it more dynamic, more energized, take it further, further, further. And if it's passive, relax, go further, make it more passive, more relaxed. Okay, Joe, should we bring in Shira for a minute? Sure, and then we should probably uh, get get onto the Q and A. Yeah, we'll do that. Hi, Shira. Hi. You got here at last. How are you doing? Yeah, I just because I think my Safari wasn't working, I switched over to Chrome, so it's working now. It's like I, I screwed up just as badly anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Hi. Want, well, let me let me just tell me just talk just tell me. I mean, we haven't got really time to get into it, but just tell me what's your what are you thinking like as a photographer what are you um what's your like when you're out there taking pictures what's the main thing in the front of your mind what, what's what's like helping you create these amazing pictures every time um the most thing like the most important for me is just to get the, the best smile so it doesn't matter like what the situation is like i try to relax the parents um if your kid is not cooperating okay this is not what you wanted well, let's work with something else. That's like my first thing. Like, let's just work with what we have with the people and their moods, get them in you, good mood. You as that's exactly what we just said just now is that first things, the top of everything is the expressions and all the stuff. And then graphics is always second. Yeah. That's basically um, one of my next things is trying to pull like everyone together, um, pulling it like to just make it look very neat and tight. Um, so I usually just have like people like bring their hands around and just to like make a finished look. Um, and then my next step further, which, and if I'm in a situation where there is, um, if I choose a location, I'll choose a location that has depth. So that I have a foreground and a background. Sometimes I come to a location that whatever it is, it is, if that's the event venue or house, or you got to work with what there is, that's like my last, um, it's very important, but the smiles are the most important. You mean, having a full, you mean having some kind of framing in the foreground? Yeah. Really, that adds a massive depth. It also, it also unites the picture. If you've got a green in the foreground, a green in the background, it creates a really, uh, not the, the word's not unite. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, unifies. Yeah. It unifies the picture. Very good. Okay. Listen, Shira. Amazing. I, I, we, uh, next time, maybe there'll be another time. Yeah. To talk later. Fantastic. And did you see why? Did you see why? How I went through your pictures? Um, two of them. <laughs> so you'll get the replay. Okay. You'll what I said, but I gave you a big thumbs up. Thank and you. What you've achieved is amazing. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Um, Q and A's. 
Joe, what's going on? Everything's good? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions, actually, which maybe we can start off. And if anyone has got other questions, then please feel free, uh, feel free to write it in the chat between me and Josh. We'll get them to Shmuel or, or Josh will answer them directly. Um, something that comes up quite a lot, but I guess there's, you know, you've got 181 people here and I'm sure half of them are new. What is... Um, why you so you personally as a photographer and as a teacher why are you so against raw oh why am i so against raw so i feel i oh, want let me maybe i'll turn this off for a second so it's a great question and i am actually against raw and i'm like one of the only photographers in the world who says this is that you have i haven't got my camera handy but you have a button on on most professional cameras now where you can switch to raw for a, a, a a limited duration of time of one picture for a very good reason that a lot of the pictures, especially where the way we're teaching how to shoot in, in the masterclass in the, in the zero to pro um, there's nothing to gain from shooting in raw. If you keep the light levels similar and one of our rules for backgrounds is comparable exposure. Once you're in that world of a comparable exposure background, you've literally, literally got nothing to gain from raw. If the white balance is whacked out, okay, then again, you've got what to gain from raw. But if you're getting to the right, if you follow our laws, our rules for white balance, again, that we make super simple, again, you're not in that world. You're just in the world of minute adjustments. Nobody knows how versatile JPEG is because everybody shoots raw. So JPEG is much more versatile than anyone thinks. And not only is RAW overrated, in my opinion, but it's also, it clogs up your camera. It creates huge files. It's, you have to process them more. Um, it, it's so many downsides to it. The storage of the pictures is annoying as well. So I have a lot of students who like to shoot, if they've got two cards in their camera, they shoot JPEG on their main card and then RAW on their backup card. That's fine and there's no problem with that. But again, that does, pardon me, cause a problem in the buffer of the camera. Again, if you look at how many pictures I'm taking to get these fantastic pictures every time, you need to be taking a lot of pictures at a, very quickly. And when you're shooting in RAW, a lot of the time the camera freezes up and you're standing there like, you know, sorry, just, just one second, just wait for my camera, like rubbing it and like shaking it. Come on, come on. <laughs> They're trying to like co coach him through it. <laughs> so it feels like sometimes so that's my my that's my thoughts on raw but i really i do recommend that everyone shoot in jpeg uh, because it's also like the idea of like driving a car if you drive a stick shift that means you can drive an automatic but if you drive an automatic that doesn't mean that you can drive a stick shift um and like i said in most cases especially according to the 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 system that we're teaching there's really nothing to gain by shooting in raw that's a great question okay joe shall i go on yeah, there's just another one. Yeah. Which you you probably talk about you have talked about a bit, but just to give a bit of clarity, can you just explain that clarity versus texture in Lightroom? That, so that was someone put that in. That's a great question. So the way I understand it, I don't, I don't know technically, but the way I see it with my eyes, is that clarity is to do with the lines and texture is to do with flat surfaces. So for example, when I add clarity, it gives a very kind of um dynamic feel because it's finding the lines and it's adding contrast to the lines what happens also as a downside is on flat areas like the skin it also finds small lines and it pushes them much further whereas if someone's skin was completely flat clarity wouldn't make a difference but no one's skin's ever completely flat whereas texture is more involved in the flat areas and when there's a flat area it makes the area softer and it kind of forgets about the lines so um, a lot of time it's nice to add clarity and take away texture that that gives you a powerful look and it keeps the skin uh, the skin not tones the skin textures smooth and attractive that's a that's a, a rule of thumb okay shall i get into the into the q and a joe good idea yeah okay let's do this one second okay can everyone see my can everyone see the q and a's Joe, are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, just read them out. I can see them. You, see, you can see. Okay, good. Um, so, again, I'm going to go quick. You can catch on the replay. I have looked through these pictures, so I did prepare some uh, some answers. So I'm just going to go. A few of these are from last week. 
Uh, okay, let's jump in. How do I know I'm ready to make a move and invest in higher quality equipment? Also, is it worth to do it at this time of year because of the great sales, even if I don't feel I'm actually ready to move on or should I wait? My advice on buying new equipment is make sure that you are thoroughly frustrated with the equipment that you have right now. Okay, if you're not frustrated with your equipment, then I think it's a mistake to buy new equipment and I wouldn't buy equipment because it's cheap. I wouldn't do that. I would wait. The cheap things will come around again. Uh, but you need to know exactly what you're buying. We're, we're here to give you a lot of advice as well. Uh, but we're we're big fans of not being an equipment junkie. I think that's a terrible, um, a terrible disease that a lot of photographers suffer from. And um, I, that's that's my thoughts on that. Can the webinars always be free? I hope so. Anaj is going to help us do this. So oh, does it make a noticeable difference to shoot with a flash? I'm very excited when shooting outdoors during the day. Absolutely big, big difference. Um, I know of professional lifestyle photographers who only shoot natural light, no flash whatsoever. That's crazy. And professional portrait photographers who shoot 90% flash. Where do you stand on this topic? Why? Cons and pros of both approaches. That's a great question. My thoughts are that if you're a really good photographer, it depends what you're going to use. You don't have a, in Hebrew it's called a sheeter. How would you say sheeter? Uh, you don't have like a, can anyone help me with that? Um, you don't have a... Um, like a, a how do you say that Josh opinion an opinion like a strong opinion you don't I don't you don't need to have a, a strong opinion on something um, whether you're a flash photographer or light or a natural light photographer whatever works so it depends what the situation is so there's certain situations where you'd be crazy to use flash and there'd be certain situations where it would be impossible not to use flash so the goal is to just be intelligent and to know what's going on and to use the right tool for the right time but to be a I only shoot natural light for me is a kind of crazy thing to say. I don't understand where that person's coming from. Um, if you don't feel like you're a good enough photographer, you charge less for photo sessions or is it better to charge more so that people won't think you're an amateur? I hear the question. Um, my, my thoughts on that are is you can't fool anyone anymore. It's not like the eighties where people deciding on a portrait photographer would have to schlep around from photographer to photographer to photographer um and they don't remember the pictures now you open up three tabs in google and you go uh oh, that that and that and you're like what well, that's like a no-brainer why would i go with that person this is much better so if you don't feel that you're a good photographer um my opinion my my advice would be shoot a lot more join our course become a fantastic photographer please god and um and then you can start charging more but if you charge a lot and your photography is not very good then i don't think you're going to get many customers in 2021 joe you agree with that absolutely 100 yeah. percent. how can i maximize the chance of getting solid referrals from customers that will lead to more great jobs okay we have to translate this word be a mensch that is the key to it all how do you translate that word be a man that is not the right no. translation. just translation of mensch a really good person like oh, honest great. And just fantastic another, charming. another an on, what charming charming okay that's good but another this is an onomatopoeic yiddish word is be geschmack okay be uh how do you say geschmack that would be no, like my husband learned that off you about <laughs> 10 years ago when he first met you and he uses it all the time daily it means what it sounds like it's onomatopoeic he's geschmack he's just like <laughs> You just want to be with him or her. That's what you know. That's the way you get referrals. Be amazing. Um, I was told that the color red is not a nice color for photography. I uploaded a photo of a baby wearing red, and to me it looks beautiful. What do you say about wearing red clothing for a photo shoot? I have no problem with that. It could be that it might be a little bit too leery, but again, it has to be. I don't think you can create a rule of not using red in a. In a Photo shoot, that's just my thoughts. Um, one, if I need to reduce the picture file size as I did upload here, when exporting images from Lightroom, is it better to reduce the pixels or to reduce the quality? So you can just reduce the, the size of the picture and that will be enough. You don't have to get involved in the quality as well. You can, once you reduce the size, generally the, uh, the picture becomes palatable. Um, could you please explain the Lightroom functions, texture work like we did that, um, and noise reduction? So noise reduction is a whole different thing, but noise reduction basically reduces the noise. Um, okay, um, how do you get rid of glasses glinting when using a flash? Sometimes a person is tilting their head downwards doesn't seem to help. Is a different way maybe to fish in the flash to help with that. So like we know, the, the rule of getting rid of glaring uh, reflections in glasses is to put the head down. Um, in regards to when you're using flash, it becomes much more of a problem. And the higher you lift the flash, pardon me, the higher you lift the flash generally, the um 
the better your chances of not having any reflections in the glasses. How can, if I know my screen is good coloring for print, uh, the attached pictures look good on my screen, but really dark when printed. So I, we don't do any color calibration with our screens. Um, I feel that it's a crazy rabbit hole that people fall into and it goes crazy. We print, we're one of the most, we, we're literally shooting at one of the most expensive, as one of the most expensive wedding photographers um, in, I mean, I don't want to say in the world, but we're very, we're, we're an expensive wedding photography outfit and we don't deal with color calibration. Um, we leave it to our printer, who's a, you know, a decent printer, nothing like wow. Um, and they do a good job generally. The problem with color calibration is if the, if the lab you're working with isn't also color calibrated or they're like, you know, the guy doing it isn't having a bad day or whatever, then it doesn't work out. So my, my, my advice would be just make sure you're using a good lab and leave it in there, leave it in there, put the ball in there, um, court. People would probably hate the fact that I said that, but that's how I feel. Um, how old are you when you started photography? I got my first camera <laughs> when I was like eight years old. And, the, and I remember my big sister making fun of how bad I was at photography. I remember that. She um, made fun about a lot more than that, don't you? <laughs> that needs to be worried. <laughs> I remember taking a picture of Auntie Ray and cutting her head off a little bit. And, and I just sort of still remember Susie like really laying into me about how terrible I was. So anyway, so um, thank God I, I practiced and I got better. But I did spend a lot of time learning about art. I was a, I was an artist as a kid for, for my whole like childhood. I was always painting and drawing and stuff like that. So uh, I use my I use my cameras like a uh, as a means to an end to help with my art projects. Uh, would you be able to share some examples of professional photos that you took and how you took it? And if you'd be able to take pictures like that on regular camera, thanks so much. I did that. That was one of the reasons why I just did what I did before. Um, okay, those pictures, you you would need flash for most of those pictures that I took. Uh, I don't know what you mean by a regular camera. Um, during the critique, you ended the picture, you made the trees look very nice and like full heather. The kids were dressed in shorts and didn't match the atmosphere. I appreciate that. I know what you're talking about and I hear what you're saying. It is important, like we said, um, going further with the edit, making sure that the edit um, is is my team is fitting for the um, is suitable for the subject, obviously, because sometimes, like you said here, if the trees could be nice and full like and the kids are dressed in like, you know, Larry, uh, Larry, whatever, uh, doesn't work. So that's a good a good uh, insight there. How do I get a kid in a bad mood to behave and enjoy himself? Um, so leave them alone don't try consciously to get them out of a bad mood like leave them be and make your energies just make yourself someone that you want to be with somebody that's exuding energy that just keeps all the energies flowing and and um and and then give candy sorry joe give candy candy also helps but if a kid's in a bad mood um you really need to i mean it's just i mean I suppose the real thing here, my real advice is trying to distract them. I remember one time having a five-year-old kid who was in a bad mood and saying, do you want to come and see, there's this little little stream over here, you want to come and see the water? And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I walked off with him, I left his parents, and we walked off, a, you know, a minute, and I took him to this little stream and we put our hands in it. And he came back and he was as good as pie. So distracting him from his mood is a good idea in any way you can. Uh, my computer's getting overloaded. Where do I save my pictures? Uh, what's the best backup system to use? Which online storage is the best? So maybe next week or in two weeks, so the next webinars in two weeks, I will give a class on archiving your pictures. Uh, but that's taken me quite a long time to work out a good way of doing that. Um, do you use iCloud? No, I don't at all. I use, oh. Smug, I use Smug Mug. Oh. Um, are they the best? I don't know if they're the best, but I'm used to them. and I recommend them to everyone because so it's be better the devil you know um but you do have unlimited storage and they do present your pictures very beautifully so i use smug mug as my as my client area and my online you pay for it that's not a free service I, right? no, it's not a free service no it isn't uh once i've really started doing photography as a business what comes next where do i begin how do i go about it how long do i do sessions for what do i offer my clients so a, in a nutshell if everybody just hears this one thing it was probably worth coming to the whole webinar ppst practice portfolio satisfy clients testimonials okay practice your heart out practice as much as you can shoot for free as much as you can okay never take pictures for somebody unless they'll let you use their pictures on your website or whatever that's portfolio so make sure you're building your portfolio okay bend over backwards for your clients never ever get 
like that on your time, on your money, whatever, bend over backwards, make sure your clients are always blown away and make sure you squeeze them for testimonials, okay? That is the four pillars of building your business. Even once your business is flying, those four pillars still stand. Um, okay, why do I sometimes have my camera blanking out between one pick and the next for longer than the usual? What causes it? Obviously it happens when the children are finally cooperating, causing me to miss those moments. I put that in because I thought maybe you're shooting in raw and that's a great example of when raw messes you up. Okay, but otherwise I don't know, maybe take your camera to a shop. Um, I have an 85 millimeter lens. I'm looking to buy a zoom lens so I can make um, take more than just outdoor pics. What would you recommend? If you have a full cray, a full frame camera, I would recommend buying uh, the 2470 2.8. It's very expensive. It's like $1,900, but it's fantastic. And you won't need to buy another lens for 10 years. If you have a crop frame camera, then I would recommend saving up for a full frame camera and buying the same lens. Uh, but failing that, then I'd probably recommend the 15 to 85 Canon. I think it's 3.5 to 5.6 or something like that. Again, a very lovely piece of glass. Uh, Joe, where are we holding? Oh, yeah, okay. I think we should probably call it. Cool it, okay. wind it up so let's just finish off wow we've still got a bunch of people here fantastic is joe a photographer at this point after hearing all this all the time <laughs> avi wants to know if you're a photographer joe no i'm his uh business advisor yeah my business advisor <laughs> anyway, look everybody um like i said because of anage we have this um this 60% off again, if you aren't enrolled in the, in the masterclass, um, you saw, this is a taste of what you get. It's, it's a, a really wonderful proven system that if you want to become a great photographer, it's just a, a, a no brain. It really is. Um, otherwise, um, we'll send out the replay to everybody. Joe, you got anything to say? No, just thank you everybody. And again, you just, uh, you know, to, to still have 164 people after an hour and a quarter really says something. So well done, Shmuel. Thank you, Joe. Okay, Josh, thanks for being there for everybody. And um, Anuj as well. I don't know if you're there anymore, but welcome to the to the family. And everybody here, it really feels like with this webinar, because you know that I'm not a, I'm a big not fan of social media and I don't have social media, thank God. Um, but... Um, but it really, this webinar has given us like a real family feel and everybody knows that we're, uh, everyone knows that we're in it for each other and we're everyone, it's just really lovely. So again, thank you very much. And um, please God, we will see you in two weeks from now. Wish you all the best.